Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Happy Lord's Day. For all of you who are here at the building, um, welcome. Praise God that we made it back here. Um, and it's uh, a joy and a blessing to worship with you, Spe also especially with those um, of our brethren who are on the Zoom platform. Um, pretty soon we'll be all together back here in the building, just hanging there. Just like our, again, I would like to uh, thank everyone for the prayers, for the songs, for all the things that we do here. Remember, Brother Carlos' message, we are created for the glory of God to give him praise and worship. So everything that we do, everything we do in our lives is being reflected to God. So, so our lesson for today, thank you very much, Brother Charles, for the prayers. Really appreciate it. You said it all. Our prayer, our lesson for today will be something about encouragement. We have been dealing with a lot of discouragement lately. This COVID situation in our country is still here. And, and, and it's affecting us. Um, but this, just what I said, this is going to be over soon. We're going to have victory in this because we know that the Lord is with us. Our text this morning is taken from 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 14 and 15. I would like to thank Brother Rex for reading that this morning. And this is the main thought of the of our uh, theme this morning. It says, do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. So whatever vast army you are dealing today in your life, don't get weary. Don't feel discouraged. For you are not fighting it alone. God is with you and he will fight for you. So, next slide. Are you this way today? Feeling blue? Yeah, blue. I, I, I just don't know why they use blue. Blue is my favorite color. But anyway, it says, blue means it being depressed or sad. I don't see the connection to that, but... They used the term blue or meaning sad back in the 1300s. So this is the history of that. But don't you worry because after this lesson, you'll be like this. Hopefully. So let's go. So when you're feeling blue, being sad or depressed, it says that is when you are weaker. Weaker in spirit, weaker in physical, because you're sad. Not good for a man or any woman of God. When there is no glow, there is no power. Remember that. We are commanded to let our light glow. Let our light shine among men and see our good works that gives glory to God. From Moses to Joshua to David to Jesus' disciples, all needed encouragement. We are human, though created in the image of God, but still in need to get our source from the giver of, our, of the source itself. Still in need of encouragement from God itself, our encouraging Father. Deuteronomy 31.6 said, Be strong and courageous. This is an encouragement coming from God. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble at them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. And he will not fail you or forsake you. That is his promise. We are hold on to God's promises and this is one of his promises. He will take care of us. <clears throat> so as we go on, I would like to mark your Bible with you on, on, uh, on the book of Second Chronicles, uh, specifically on verse 20 or chapter 20, as we move on to our, 
to our lesson this morning. And bear with me, I think I will be getting some of your time this morning. Okay, let's go on. Do not be discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is yours, but God's. Our relationship we have with the Lord can be seen by our commitment in doing our service to Him. Philippians chapter 2, 14, 16 says, Do all things without grumbling, disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain, nor labor in vain. And so our service to our fellow men, Matthew 22, 37, 39 says, And he said to him, You shall love your Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And this is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. This is our service. This is when the zealous towards God's righteousness is like an adrenaline rush in our body, which is called high spirit. The Bible calls it, we are filled with the spirit. Filled with the spirit means a steady submission of one's life to the God of glory. It says, walk in the spirit and live in the spirit. Acts 9, 17 says, Brings us back when the Apostle Paul, is still, still Saul at that time, was visited by Ananias. So Ananias departed and entered the house. And after laying his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you were coming has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, that was Paul and the rest is history. Upon his conversion, his seal in his service to the Lord never ceased unto his death. Men and women of God, you know what I'm talking about when I say about filling with the Spirit. When you are filled with the Spirit in your service to God, that joy, that eagerness to learn, that eagerness to serve, we all know that. Serving God comes with an eternal hope of happiness and joy. Therefore, we must strive to follow Christ at all times to receive the reward of eternal life. Romans 6.18 tells us that we have, you have been set free from sin and become slaves to righteousness. The Bible calls it, we are slaves of righteousness because we serve the living God, which is the only righteous. But then, what happens when you start to lose your zeal? Our spirit seems to be gone. It's like climbing a stretch of your faith and then suddenly reaching a plateau. You are wondering why these sorts of things are happening to your life. You got stress on the other side, fatigue in this, confusion, depression, anxiety. Sometimes leading to doubt. You feel like you're trapped and having thoughts of giving up. Seriously, brother, sometimes you thought you're, you'd like to give up. It's scary. Very scary. Paul advises the churches in Galatia not to become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Galatians 6, 9. So, weariness is common to man. We should understand that. That's why we have to learn to deal with it and escape from it. It's real. But first, we have to understand our relationship with God. Wise words from Philip Yancey, an author, a commentator. He said, any relationship involves times of closeness and times of distance. And in a relationship with God, no matter how intimate, the pendulum will swing from one side 
to the other. Your relationship with the Lord might reach a cool off status. And that is when worship is difficult. God tests us by drawing far from us. Some call it spiritual dryness, doubt, and estrangement from God. Yancey called it the dark night of the soul or the winter of the heart. Encouragement, Isaiah 45, 15 says, Truly you are a God who hides himself, O God of Israel, the Savior. The prophet Elijah, 1 King, chapter 18, After the magnificent show of God's power and might at Mount Carmel, and even prayed for the rain after a three and a half year of drought, it happened. And what's next? His next adventure in his faith is running away, fearful from his life. States by Jezebel and King Ahab. All that energy and that enthusiasm he had at Mount Carmel is gone. He's running for his life. At this point in his life, he felt helpless and hopeless. Let's listen. First King 19.4 says, while he himself went on a day's journey into the desert, he ran for a day. He came to a broom tree, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. He said, I might have had enough. I, I had enough, Lord. He said, take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. See, this is the great prophet that showed everybody that he's, his God is so great. And now he's running and he wants to die. Elijah was discouraged, also known as weary. He didn't even see the blessing having a broom tree there, a shade in the middle of the desert. He didn't see that. I believe that God provided the tree for him so that he could rest. And that's not even it. God sent an angel to feed him. In his weakness, God nourished him back to his strength. That's the takeaway. God, in His mercy, provides sustenance and rest for His discouraged servant. He will do that to all of us. King David mentioned this in Psalm 10.1. Why, O Lord, he said, why do you stand far away? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? Why? Sometimes we ask that. We pray just like nothing is happening. The point here is that sometimes in our lives, we feel helpless in our situation. And being in that state will cloud our thinking. Next, fear will overtake us and might even have control over us. All of us, no exemptions, go through this kind of test. We are God's people, yes, but even as God's people, we are not immune to such terrible feelings of sometimes feeling of abandonment. Especially when what we see is clear on what the enemy might do to us. Because we know, we know when we are discouraged that the enemy is there. Actually, God didn't abandon us. We abandoned God. When things are going smoothly and everything seems to be working well, we let go of God's unchanging hand. The hand that holds you and gives you, that guides you as you walk with him. And slowly drifting away from him. And then when we face the storms of life, we decided to look back and try to hold on back. Unfortunately, he's not there. We can't find him. This time, God seems to be nowhere to be found. You can see him because the storm surrounding you Lost him. I mean, because there's a storm surrounding you and you can only see the storm. You let go of your guide and you lose your direction. You let go of your light and you lose, you got lost in the darkness. God promised that, that he will not leave us or forsake us. But sometimes it feels that he did. You are discouraged. 
from the from the author and a, and a Nobel writer Michael Hoppe says hard times create strong men strong men creates good times now this is the part of good times creates weak men and weak men creates hard times discouragement brothers and sisters is the devil's device to deprive saints heart and hope it makes you feel helpless and hopeless makes you focus on the negative and expect failure and easily accept faulty beliefs take heed brothers and sisters for this is the moment where the enemy is so near and might get the chance to snatch us and slowly devours us without even noting is it noting is it noticing it do not let your enemy erode your faith i can save some red flags to watch out when you're slowly sliding down when the test of this kind hits us and let weariness gets into us our way of thinking is shifting slowly but surely to doubt and this undiscerning in our decisions then fall into temptation any kinds of temptation an example from king david when he yielded into his desire towards Bathsheba. let us understand the situation here he was there on top of his roof just doing nothing remember the proverb the idle mind is the devil's workshop meaning people who have nothing to think about will usually think of something bad to do so we would we don't know what david was thinking at that time but he gave in and what will happen when you give in to temptation you will disregard all the things that are important to you because of the ebb and flow of life the woes of everyday living sometimes we take for granted especially our loved ones we take for granted our family we disregard them forgetting about the blessings that you love once that your loved ones give to you we disregard the teachings that we have learned the word of god that you always knew you will remember them but there will be no conviction you will sacrifice everything you will not care because you're being led not by the spirit of god but the spirit of darkness you will go from it like a suicide mission without considering any consequences thinking that it's going to be okay and so on and so forth brothers and sisters these are red flags racing red lights flashing and we should be alarmed alarmed david as we all know is a man of after god's own heart but in this type of situation he acted upon his own will and relied on his own understanding his heart became complacent as he went forth and continued with his seed until God intervened through the prophet Nathan. Actually, you know, David could have ended this early. You know why? God, God gave him signs, but he ignored them. Number one, but Sheba, she's a neighbor and she's married. Second, her husband is his best man in the battle. He should have already stopped there. You know, saying again, the strong man gives easily. Gives in easily. I don't know why they say that. Maybe it's true. Strong man gives in easily. How about you? How about you right now? Are you in a situation where you are ignoring God's voice and still hiding inside yourself? Or are you questioning God why these things are happening in your life? And feeling helpless and just don't know what to do I'm tired of resisting times like this what can we do in times like this where can we find encouragement well as i told you i'm gonna take some of your time let's look at some of the verses in the bible how to deal with discouragement philippians 3 13 14 says brother i do not consider that i have made it my own but one thing i do forgetting what lies behind and straining forward what lies ahead i press on toward the goal for the price of the upward call of god in christ jesus 
meaning refresh, reboot, reset, refocus. Let us now consider another example of such a true story of God's encouragement in the Bible. I chose the life of King Jehoshaphat, King of Judah, 2 Chronicles 20. That's why I told you to mark your Bible there. How did he do it? It is an example to follow. After the death of King Ahab at the battle at Ramon Gilead, Jehoshaphat had set his heart on seeking the true God and made effort to his people to turn back to the Lord. Second Chronicles 19.9 said, He gave them these orders, You must serve faithfully and wholeheartedly to the Lord. And so they did. Pull Judah. Peace reigned over the land of Judah until the time for God to test their faith. Okay, read 2 Corinthians 21 to 3. I summarize it. It says, Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, ordering all his people to seek to the Lord. To seek the Lord. First thing he do, he did, he turned their eyes back to the Lord in prayer. Trials in life will always show up when we are unaware of it. It will catch you unprepared. You will be alarmed. Bible dictionary defines alarm as notified of sudden danger, surprised with fear or expectation of evil. First thing he did, he turned his eyes back to the Lord in prayer. And then he told his people to do the same. For us, we could always trust a brother a brethren, a sister, to know about your situation so that they could help you pray, help you pray for it, help pray for you and encourage you. You will not seek the advice from the world, but from your brethren. First, that you will feel helpless, but not hopeless. Number two, chapter 25 to 9. He recalled, he remember, he looked back of his past deliverance in such a helpless situation. When we face this kind of situation, let's open our Bible and read back all those true stories that gave us encouragement. The life in the desert, the, the protection of God, wherever they went, the, 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 the battle of... Uh, uh, of Joshua, the battle of uh, Gideon, the healing of the sick people of Jesus' uh, time, all of this. Read again those true stories on how God made the way. Recall your blessings. Let's like our, name, our song goes, name them one by one. Count your blessings, name them one by one. I forgot the slides. But anyway... We're there. Okay. 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 Recall your past. Recall your blessings. Name them way more. Some clear signs that God has not abandoned you. Some clear signs that God has not abandoned you. You woke up this morning. You still have food on your table. Your loved ones... Are there to support you? You and your family are safe and healthy. You have a good job and a source of income. You have a roof over your head. You find solutions to your problems. You survive each day stronger. You have hope for the future. You are hungry for God's presence. You still have reasons to thank God for. You can find comfort in God's word. And so on. So many blessings. By doing this, it brings us for the next step. What did Jehoshaphat did on uh, chapter 20, verse 9? He proclaimed his faith. Let us proclaim our faith, make it known, and declare it. This can rebuild your courage and trust that the Almighty is over all. Like Brother Derek, whenever I come to him, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a whiner when it comes to Brother Derek. And he said, Hey, brother, don't feel bad. God is on his throne. God is in his throne. God is on his throne. 
means whatever your situation is, God still rules. I appreciate that, dear brother. We serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We carry the banner of the cross. We are a soldier of Christ. We will stand in his presence. We will cry out to you and you will hear us. You will deliver us. We will, may feel fearful or helpless, but we are not hopeless. Always be reminded that God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and supremely good. In other words, God knows everything and has the power to do anything. Perfectly good, and God is overall. Number four, cast all your burdens upon him. Cast all your burdens upon God and he will give you rest. Pour out your heart to God, your helplessness and your disappointment. Give them all to him. Give them all to Jesus, the song says, and he will turn your sorrows into joy. Verse 12 on chapter 20, he says, Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. Jehoshaphat said, we do not know what to do. He said, he presented his helplessness. But, he said, our eyes are upon you. But our eyes are upon you. Fix your eyes to the Lord. Do not falter. Do not hesitate. Stand firm. Number five. Open your ears for his answer, for his whisper. He will encourage you to get you out of that trouble. Verse 15 on chapter 20 said, Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours but God's. During that time, we have prophets. But now, we don't have anything of that. But sometimes, God speaks to us in a certain way. We just need to be sensitive and understand it. We just need to be sensitive to it and understand it. We can get it from our brethren, from, our, from other people. We could turn on the radio or turn on the TV and then that guy is speaking towards us. We don't know how God works. But we need to be sensitive and listen. We can get it from the Bible. Sometimes we just open our book and then we it's there. It's there. Incredible. Sometimes we just need to keep still. Still. Be still. Psalm 46 10 says, Be still and know and know that I am God. Wait. Wait for his answer with patience. Isaiah 41, 10 says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Right hand. It is a metaphor for the omnipotence of God. In the Bible, to be at the right side is to be identified as being a special place of honor. The power of his right hand is righteousness. Are you dealing with temptation? He will find a way out for you. 1 Corinthians, 30, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can endure it. Only thing, we have eyes, sometimes we cannot see. We have ears, sometimes we cannot hear. So make use of them. Make sure you see it. Like the song goes, the answer is blowing in the wind. Number six. We're only almost done. Do your part. As soon as you know what to do, as soon as you get back to your senses, do your part. Do something that God wants you to do as an act of worship and obedience. 
Do good in the eyes of God and man. God will make a way. Continue doing what is good. Trust that He will make a way when there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. Remember that song? Even sometimes it seems unreasonable or weird. It's like the battle of Gideon. They just blasted their trumpets and then oil and then they shouted and then the, the, all the enemies were confused. Joshua, he just circled so some many times as instructed and the wall collapsed. That makes sense, right? But to God, that's it. God will intervene, but we need to act. Don't resist. So tiring resisting the truth. Give to God your best, and God will do the rest. And number seven, worship God and praise His name with thanksgiving. Sorry, I'm late on my slides. Worship God and praise His name with thanksgiving. Trusting God will take care of the rest of the matter. On verse 21, after consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise Him for the splendor of His holiness as we went out at the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for His love endures forever. He proclaimed His faith. He recalled His blessing. He did His part. He did all the seven. And then He was successful. He did, they didn't even do anything. Remember the story? The, 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 the enemies got confused and they killed themselves there. When they, when they reached the battle site, all the people are there dead. All they did is to gather the loot or to gather the things that they, that God blessed them with things that this enemy has. The court went on the other side. Trust God that he will intervene. Pray. Pray, pray. Read, read, read the word of God. Count your blessing. Make yourself useful. Philippians 1.11 tells us keeping our eyes fixed unto Jesus, Jesus will keep you busy doing good deeds that brings glory and praise to God. Brother Carlos' lesson on our Wednesday night Bible class, we are created to bring glory, honor, and praise to God because He is our maker. Isaiah 43, 7 says, Bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. Put color into your life. I mean, contribute something for the beauty of this earth. You know, make yourself useful. Remember, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Use all the gifts that God gave you and glorify him. Work as much as we have the opportunity. Be diligent. You may not have another opportunity to serve the king. And the time is now. Do not go weary. Echoing Brother Rex's lesson again about work. And whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human master. My wife and I usually discuss things at home after work. We always complain. But then when we realize what Brother Rex said in the Bible, says, work as you are working for the Lord, it makes us feel better. Recalling this lesson from Brother Rex, another, another thing, what makes us feel better? We should renew our minds, brethren. Recalling Brother Mike's lesson last Wednesday, a transformed person. We consider ourselves transformed by accepting Christ and being baptized. And it should appear in our actions, in our speech, in, I, in, our, in, our, in our walk of life. Be prayerful. Philippians 4.8 Whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. If you cannot think about anything, think about these things. Galatians 6, 9. So, 
Let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap the harvest of blessing if we won't give up. He is your strength. If you are lost, He is the way. Just follow Him. He will guide you. If you are confused, just trust Him because He is the truth. If you are just living a lifeless life, He is life. He is the life. So do not be troubled. Christ has already overcome your problems. Just surrender to Him. You have learned the truth about the Word of God. And when doubts occur, just hold on to the truth. Forgetting what was behind, straining towards the goal, pressing on for the price with a promise. So, why weary? The lesson is yours, is yours. And if you need a prayer, please let us know so that we can all pray for you. If you want to come, if you want to uh, move, come forward and uh, be restored, let let us know. So that we could pray for you too. If you decided to accept the invitation and uh, join the family of God, we have here water prepared for you, nice and warm, and start living a new life in Christ. Accept the invitation. Thank you again for the opportunity, and may we glorify God for all things that we do, because to Him all things belong. Amen. <laughs>